and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman. Today we're going to learn an old bagpipe melody that comes from hundreds of years ago. A bagpipe is a musical instrument with a very distinctive sound. Let's have a listen. Bagpipes are used for special ceremonies and in the military. You'll see them most often in places like Canada and the United Kingdom, especially Scotland. Now let's take a look at the score for bagpipe. For starters, I'll play bagpipe for you while you follow along by watching the score. Now, let's take a minute to analyze the score for bagpipe. Just take a look and see if there are any symbols that jump out for you. One symbol that may be new for you is this symbol, which is called a forte marking. Anytime you see these kind of fancy looking letters in music, those are called dynamic markings, and they tell you how loud or soft to play. F stands for forte, which means to play with strength, loudly. And whenever you see a dynamic mark, all the notes that come after it, starting with the note it is lined up with, all of these notes will be played forte. Then you might have noticed this repeat sign, so we'll go back and play it again, forte. Play all those notes. Now, down here on line two, we have another dynamic marking. And P stands for piano. Now, <laughs> the piano obviously means the thing with black and white keys that you play on, but piano also has another meaning. Piano in Italian also means soft. So all of these notes you'll play softly. Now, other things we should always check out are the clefs. We have our treble clef for this top staff. And down here we have a bass staff. Today we'll just be learning the, the notes on the, the treble staff. And then we should check our time signature. Our time signature is 4-4, four, four, and that top number tells us how many beats we will have in every measure. Now, let's check out the rhythm of line one of bagpipe. Can you point and speak the rhythm words with me? We're going to say ta for the quarter notes, tt for the eighth notes, and two for the half note. Let's say it together with a good steady beat. Can you point on your screen with me and let's say the rhythm words. Ready, go. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, ta, tu. And then it repeats. But now, instead of going back and doing the repeat, let's work on counting the beat, which we've recently learned how to do. Remember, there's two ways to count rhythms. We can use the rhythm syllables like we just did, ta and titi, or we can count the beat while we tap the rhythms. So, every quarter note gets one beat. So that measure would just be one, let me point up here, one, two, three, four. Now, here in measure two, Remember that two eighth notes share a beat. So I put a circle around them to remind you that everything in that circle is one beat. Here's beat one, here's beat two, here's beat three, and here's beat four. Let me make that a little bit darker. There's beat four. So we have beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. So while you're saying two, you actually have to tap twice like this. One, two, three, four. And sometimes people say two and three, but I just like to say two once. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Can you count that beat with me while you tap that rhythm? Go. One, two, three, four. Good. Then this measure we have one, two, 
three, four, then one, two, three, four. This half note gets two beats, so it's three, four. There's kind of this invisible beat four. This half note takes up two beats, so you have to think of both of those beats, even though it's invisible. Remember that it's still there, even if you can't see it. It's lurking in the end of that measure. So try tapping this measure with me and counting. Go. One, two, three, four. So you say three and four, but you only tap on beat three, and then you hold through beat four. Great. Now let's try this whole line together while you count out loud and tap the beat with me. You can just tap on your lap or on any other flat surface nearby. So tap and count. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Repeat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, one last thing I want to analyze before we play this, and that is to hunt for any skips. You should be pretty good by now at recognizing steps and skips. Remember, a step always goes from a line to a space or a space to a line. So here it's easy to see those are stepping down. But how do you recognize a skip? Well, it's going to go farther, like maybe from this line to this line. So let's find all of those, and I'm going to use a blue highlighter to help me identify where there are any skips. And this is the skip of a third. So I'm going to write a three right there. And I encourage you to do this in your own sheet music, which you can download from our website. So we've got a third there. These are just steps, so I won't mark those. Then we step up, step up, step up, step down. Aha, here's another skip. Skip of a third again. Skip down. Now, can you find two more skips on this line? You probably found one here. We skip up. And can you tell me the interval from this G to that D? If you said a fifth, you're correct. You can think of a fifth like a double skip. It goes from a line, skip a line, to another line. So that's all the way from DO to SO. And then we've got another skip of a third down here from ME to DO. Now, it looks like we've done an awesome job analyzing the rhythms, the intervals, the dynamics. So, let's come to the piano keys and try to play it. First item of business is figuring out where to place our hand. So, to do that, we always look at the first note and see if there's a finger number there. And there is. So, we know we'll be starting on finger five, right hand. And what note do we need to place finger five on? Can you tell me the letter name of this note? If you said D, you're correct. One easy way to figure that out is to use our guide notes. Remember that treble C is this third space up. Here's my middle C. Here's treble C. And we see that the starting note is just one step above that. So with five on D, you'll see that our fingers fall into the G major pentascale. Now, instead of me teaching this song to you, because you're getting so good at reading notes now, let's have you figure out the first four notes on your own. You know that it starts with finger five on D. Now, looking at the notes, can you figure out how to play them? Press pause and try the first four notes on your own, and then I'll show you so you can see if you got it right. Okay, you should have played D, C, B, G, or in solfege, so, fa, mi, do, because we step down, step down, and then skip down. Okay, let's try playing that together and sing the solfege. We start on so, ready, play with me, go. So, fa, mi, do, very good. Now, the next measure I'd also like you to figure out on your own without my help. So we just finished on DO, and now what's happening? We're going to step up, and then I'll let you figure it out from there. This one's a little trickier because you have those two eighth notes. 
So first, I'd like you on your own to give it a try. See if you can play those notes. Uh, press pause to work that measure out on your own and then press play and we'll do it together. Okay, this measure starts on a re, then steps up to me, steps up to fa, steps back down to me, then skips down to do. And then in rhythm we have re, mi, fa, mi, do, because it's ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. Let's try to play that together. Start with finger two on re, and let's play it, go. Re, mi, fa, mi, do. Good, now let's put those two measures together. I'll play it once and then you play it. My turn first. So, fa, mi, do, re, mi, fa, mi, do. Now you try by yourself, go. Good, now you can press pause if you need extra practice with that. Otherwise, let's go on to the next two measures. What do you notice about measure three? If you notice it's the same as measure one, you are correct. Once again, we have a so, fa, mi, do. So let's play that, go. So, fa, mi, do. And then, can you tell me the solfege for these last three notes of the line? If you said re, re, do, you're correct. So now, I'd like you to press pause and work on all of line one until you can play it confidently. Try singing the solfege as you play, then try it again and sing the rhythm words or count the beat as you play. And then press play to go on. Now we're ready for line two. So the first thing we should do is take a look at the notes and see what's the same and what's different. Because remember, music is filled with patterns, so there may be some patterns we've already learned. Or maybe every note is different. We've got to figure that out. So looking at measure one of line two, does it start off the same or different from line one? If you said different, you're correct. Remember in line one, we had that so, fa, mi, do. Now this time we're starting on do, which in this piece, since we're in G major, the key of G major, we are starting on do this time and stepping up. We also happen to be piano this time. So this pattern is new. Can you find any skips in this measure? Point to it. If you're pointing here, you're correct. So in your music, let's mark that uh, with a three to remind us that's a third down. We're gonna skip down there. Now, can you find three more skips from uh, across the next five notes. There's one here. Can you tell me what interval from this G to that C? If you said a fourth, you're correct. Then there's another skip here. We're going down what interval? Can you tell me the interval? If you said a third, you're correct. A third will always be a line to a line like this, or a space to a space like this. Now, is this a skip? No, that's just a step up, which we can also call a second, if you're talking in intervals. But here is another skip down of a third. So here's another pattern that we haven't seen before. So, so far these first two measures are unique. That makes this a contrasting line. Now let's take a look at these two measures. Have you seen this pattern before in the music? If you said yes, you're correct. This is the same pattern we saw in measure two of line one. Go ahead and mark that skip down of a third. And then what about re, re, do? Have we seen that before? Yes, we have. We saw it at, in the last measure of line one. We just don't have those notes in between this time. So it's, it's kind of a variation, but using patterns we've seen before. Now let's come to the piano and try and play it. All right, for line two, we start on do, like we said. Can you tell me the solfege for these first four notes? 
If you said do, re, mi, do, then you're correct. Let's try to play it together. Start with finger one on G, go. Do, re, mi, do. Very good. Now, let's look at measure two. We skip up a fourth from do, which in solfege would be what? Do, re, mi, fa, one, two, three, four, it's fa. We have fa, skip down, step up, skip down. See how that forms a little pattern? Fa, re, mi, do. Try to play that with me. Ready, go. Fa, re, mi, do. So we have fa, skip down, step up, skip down. Now let's put those two measures together. My turn. Do, re, mi, do, fa, re, mi, do. Good. Now I'd like you to press pause and try that like five or six times until you can play it with no missed notes confidently. Then press play to go on. Now, the second half of this line has a pattern we already learned from line one. Remember, it starts on re. Re, mi, fa, mi, do. Can you play that with me? Ready, start on re, finger two, go. Re, mi, fa, mi, do. Good, and then we finish with another pattern we've had before. Re, re, do. So putting that together, we have re, mi, fa, mi, do. Re, re, do. Now your turn to try. Start on re, go. Now if we put all of line two together, and I'm going to play it piano because that's what the dynamics say, we'll get this. Do, re, mi, do, fa, re, mi, do, re, mi, fa, mi, do, re, re, do. Now I'd like you to press pause and work on that line several times, maybe five, maybe ten times, until you can play it with no missed notes. Then press play to go on. Now let's analyze line three. Can you tell me what is the same and what is different from line three compared to either of our previous lines? Tell me what you notice. If you notice that the notes are exactly the same as line two, you're correct. It's important to check every single note because sometimes music will trick you and make a very small change. But if you check every single note, they match exactly, except one thing. Can you tell me the one thing that's different about line three? If you said the dynamics, you're correct. This forte mark is the only thing that's different from line two to line three. So we're gonna play the same notes again, but this time string, strong, <laughs> with strength or loudly. And hopefully saying the right words. Now, as you're practicing bagpipe, I have a few tips for you. And number one is to remember that bagpipe music is for marching, not running. This song shouldn't be played sloppy and fast like that. It's it's steady and it's stately. It's, it's important music. And when you have these quarter notes, make sure they have a very steady beat. Ta, 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 ta. Do not rush those quarter notes. Keep them steady like marching soldiers. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. Okay? One way to help with that is to use our good friend, the metronome. I hope it's becoming your good friend. So if I put my metronome on, I recommend starting somewhere between 80 and 88 beats per minute. At 88, that would sound like this. Ta, ti, ti, ta, 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 If that's a little too fast, you can start at around 80. You should be able to play with no missed notes and no pauses at that speed, and then you can gradually speed it up to a maximum speed of about 112. So use the metronome. I wouldn't start with the metronome until you're confident with the notes. You can play through them. Then once you feel like you've got it, start using the metronome to keep the beat steady. Great job learning bagpipe today.
on your own, please practice bagpipe every day until you are very confident with it. When I practice, I like to challenge myself to play an entire line with no missed notes. First three times, then maybe five times. I encourage you to try that too. Having a challenge for yourself, like playing a line without a single missed note, that can help you focus and can turn your practicing into a kind of game for yourself. If you have a practice strategy, game, or tip that really helps you, please share it in a comment below. Happy practicing and see you next time. You know what's missing from this song? Uh, what? Lyrics. Huh? Lyrics, you know, the words of the song. Let's make some up. Cool idea. Okay, I'll go first. Huh? Listen how the bagpipes are playing Loud and strong they fill the air Music playing, banners waving Marching, marching home from war Welcome father, welcome brother We are so thankful you are home Hello sister Hello, mother, soldiers return no more to Rome. Take a bow, guys.